He said, yeah, I, said, I agree with almost everything you teach in that religious science you teach, but uh, he said, except for one thing. And I said, what's that? He said, well, you people believe you have choice. He said, I don't believe we have choice. I said, that's your choice. <laughs> How many know if you choose not to choose, you're going to demonstrate something in your life that will make the choice for you? You'll marry it, you'll go to work for it, or you'll give birth to it. Okay. <laughs> Hey, give up all my choices. Okay. So we have, somebody said that between the services, they, they were working on something they need to be cured. And I thought about, how many remember Dr. Kennedy Schultz and love him? Remember Dr. Ken? Okay. Ken Schultz, one of his greatest things he ever said was, stop trying to be cured and let yourself be healed. He said the reason you need to do that is to cure something what you have to do is take a piece of meat, inject it with a foreign substance, and hang it in the dark for a long time. Okay. And that's what people do who try to get cured. Everyone say... <laughs> so, everybody say, I choose to be healed. Healed of what? Healed of... All you need to be healed from is your negative thinking. Because the minute the negative thinking goes away, what happens? The, the things the negative thinking causes goes away. Find the truth. The truth will set you free into what? Into a greater idea of yourself. And as you let go and let it happen, the beautiful in you as you begins to embrace greater and greater possibility. Dr. Ernest Holmes says on page 459 of the Science of Mind textbook, when we realize that God and man are one and not two, we shall love both. That's a powerful statement. We shall love both. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. I now abideth in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity that we should be charitable to who first point to it yourself listen you cannot give the world more than you're giving to yourself this is why we need to love ourselves first and most so we can love everybody else more it's not selfish to love yourself it's not selfish to appreciate yourself it's not selfish to honor, uh, to dishonor you know to honor yourself, honor yourself, appreciate yourself. This is why for years we've been affirming, say it with me, I appreciate what I know I am. I appreciate what I know. And what are you? Say it with me, a mighty moving power of what? God. Okay, that's what you are. Why dishonor that? We said last week in, uh, in Roseburg uh, when we were there for, uh, for the Sunday service last Sunday and it was great, the wonderful, wonderful turnout. And wonderful experience with the choir and everybody. How many were there? Raise your hand if you're up there with us. Yeah. And last week I said something that uh, afterwards somebody pointed out to me how important it was that I said it because it really jarred them awake. And what I pointed out was that we believe in a deity that's too universal to be defined by doctrine and too impersonal to be limited by dogma, yet it is too loving to be refused or to refuse anyone. It's too loving to say, I'm sorry, I don't love you. I'm sorry, I don't love you. I was raised in one of those religions that only loved us and didn't love them. And I said, well, I love them. <laughs> I think I'll go find a God that loves them too, okay. And so I found religious science. And what religious science teaches and what we have always stood for is what? An, em an, income, uh, an embracing idea. You see, we're not tolerators. I don't like it when people get up and say, well, we need more tolerance. Well, tolerance is saying, I don't like you, but I'll put up with you. See, we are inclusive. We are saying, namaste, the God in me greets the God in you, whether you know it's there or not. And the God in me greets my home and my work and my play and my school and my teachers and my friends. And the God in me greets it in them whether they know it's there or not. I'm not going to wait for them to know it's there for me to know it's there. And act like I know it. And when I do that, boom, stress disappears. 
Reasons for anger disappears. Forgiveness takes its place. I was talking to someone who was here first time at the first service over in the bookstore. She was uh, dealing with attitudinal healing and, and different aspects and we were talking and comparing what we do in religious science. And I pointed out to her that I have seen more people healed by way of forgiveness than any other one cause I've ever observed in my life. If people would just let go and forgive, for whose sake? If you have someone or something to forgive, go ahead and forgive it for your sake, not theirs. How many know that if you're hanging on to resentment and anger, you're not going within and finding the best within yourself and letting it come forth? And the only person you're wiping out is you. You're not doing anything to them. Okay. I've had people come in and they, they're talking about some, something they're angry about. And I say, when did it happen? And they will say, I don't know, 35 years ago. I said, do you even remember what they looked like? No. <laughs> you know what? If you're hang, hanging on to something you're angry about for that long, if they showed up, you probably wouldn't know who they were. Okay, but you know what the anger is and why you need to have it. Well, why not know why you need to let it go more? So that you can free yourself and free your body and free your world into a greater idea. Eric Butterworth, which we, who we all love and, and honor, he said life fundamentally, life is fundamentally a matter of growing and growth of experience. A growth of experience. We've all had experience, haven't we? Don't be one of those people who have experience and they don't learn from it because they think it was God's will. They don't learn from it because they blame it on somebody else. How many know that if you choose to learn from all the experiences you've had in your life, happy, unhappy, positive, and negative, if you choose to embody all the lessons you've had, you will graduate into a whole new level of being you. Plotinus said this, if you want to do something, do it. <laughs> okay. And what did Yoda say? You either do or not do. There is no try. Okay. Everyone say, I discover an inner power. At a level I've never known before. I do something wonderful with it. And as I do, the wonderful blesses me. Because it is me. You see, it is you, my dear friends. How many are Chick Corea fans? Okay. Two of us know who Chick Corea is. <laughs> Dwayne knows who Chick Corea is. Yes, right. Okay. All those children from the 60s and 70s. Anyhow. I love Chick Corea. I still have all these albums and I love it dearly. He said... I searched through a million drugs, diet, mysticism, religions, intellectualism, and much more, only to find that truth is basically simple. And it feels good, and it feels clean, and it feels right. Truth is very simple. Dr. Holmes said once, what we teach in religious science is so simple, we have to complicate it up so people will believe it. It is simple, dear people. Look within. Jesus said 2,000 years ago, you may search low here or search low there for the kingdom. It is within you. And if it's within us, when is it within us? Now. now. Say with me together as we affirm from the handout I gave you. Let's affirm the next paragraph. I understand that through never-ending communion with divine love, I flow into right decisions and healthy choices. Well-being and happiness is my way. And I renew my life with love. I am one with God's life. Therefore, peace of mind and ultimate good are mine by right of consciousness. I accept them now. Do it. Let it be your way. Namaste. It's good to be home. Happy Father's Day. Good.